It appears to be an unfortunate fact for RVs in general, but they don't seem to perform so well in cold climates unless they were specifically built for that purpose. At the time of the making of this video, we're staying in the Pacific Northwest in the winter. This means that the nights are generally on the cooler side, in the 30s or 40s, and that it is raining constantly and therefore creating a lot of moisture. Recently, we even had a winter system go through the area, which brought the temperatures at night into the teens, and this is where the proverbial shit really hit the fan beneath the mattress. Before that, I had taken note that it was wet on cooler nights under the mattress, but with that cold front, the mattress had literally frozen stuck to the surface it was sitting on, and mold had grown all around the walls the mattress was touching. Mold. Oh, bloody mold. mold. We're not supposed to talk about the bloody mold, mold but there's a bloody mold, mold waking me in the face. This was quite disturbing, so we decided to take some action, and after some research came upon this Hypervent Airflow Mattress Underlay sold on Mattress Insider. It's very similar to the stuff used in construction to prevent moisture buildup behind stucco walls. The idea is that it elevates your mattress and creates a path for air to combat moisture buildup. Which is a good idea for our situation because the non-breathable foam mattress was just laying on a completely flat plastic-like surface which allowed for no air circulation to take place and no gaps for water to evaporate through. I should also note that our bed is located inside a slide-out on our RV which means it is very exposed to cold air from all sides. To start, we ordered the appropriate size for a short queen bed off of the Mattress Insider website. Once the mesh arrived, we put our mattress cover and sheets through the laundry and did our best to clean all the mold off with some vinegar and dry off the moisture both on the surface the mattress sat on as well as the mattress itself with the help of a hair dryer. Luckily, no mold has grown on this, and as you can see, here's some of that Pacific Northwest humidity in the rainy season. The hypervent came in two rolls with some duct tape, with a fabric glued to one end that has excess fabric available on one side to allow for overlapping and taping pieces together. We cut everything to size using scissors and taped it all together. The remaining excess we used to line the back wall. If we had more, we'd line the sides as well. Once it was all in place, we laid the mattress down on the fabric site of the hypervent and arranged our bed again. So now for the big question. Did it work? Yes and no. It hasn't prevented condensation from forming, but it does seem like it has reduced it. A big benefit, of course, is that with the mattress elevated, it is now no longer in contact with that surface, so it, along with the sheets, is no longer getting wet, which was a huge concern. However, the disturbing part is that mold and condensation is still forming here on the wall where the mattress gets cradled, which I'm not sure is a fault of the hypervent. I presume that this is a particular problem area because that's where the cavity is for the slide-out rails, which doesn't really have much in the way of insulation. The next thing we did was purchase an air purifier and placed it next to the bed both to push air around under the mattress, but also to get rid of some of these mold spores. Time will tell if that helps, and I'll pin a comment if it does. Other than that, we're just being vigilant and periodically cleaning the surface with some vinegar solution and looking for warm weather to return. Until next time, thank you for watching.